Hello everyone, this is Stefan coming to you once again from inside the doghouse. When it rains, it pours. Over the past five or six weeks, I've bought quite a few collections of videos that have gone up already for most of them. Uh, I think it's like a, basically a collection a week uh, on average during that time. This is after going like quite a stretch without buying any. I think what happened was that during the pandemic, people were selling off their books. They're at home. They, um, you know, cleaning out their stuff and saying, oh, you know, I, I should do, do something with these comics. So, so it was very hot at that time. And then when the prices were falling, there were less people selling. And now it seems like there's people trying to cash out uh, while there's still, you know, some value in their comics. So it's starting to really pick up again. But you never know, like I, I might go another six months without buying a collection. That's just the way it goes. So a person that I know, he um, contacted me and he was collecting Spider-Man. He had, uh, you know, a run going. He wanted to fill out the, the first series, Amazing Spider-Man run. Came to the conclusion that there's other things to spend money on and it's a horribly expensive run once you get into the bigger books and the early issues, even for cheap copies. And so he contacted me to see if we could work out a deal. And I said, sure, that sounds really good. And I'll be completely honest, I did not expect a deal to happen. A lot of times people inside the comic uh, community, they know how much, you know, they've been buying their the comics slowly over time. They know how much they've spent on it. And as a collection in a package deal, a lot of times you get, you know, quite a bit less than that because you're taking less to get rid of all of the books at once. And there has to be a reason for the person buying the collection to buy it. Like if they don't, if they're just, if they can only hope to maybe see all of their money back years down the road and that's it, um, it'd be pretty foolish to buy the collection. That's just the way the economics of, of comics goes. So he contacted me, came over, and when we talked price, we actually came to a conclusion fairly quickly. Um, I think I, I may have overpaid by about 200 bucks, um, but that's fine because I know him and it, it, it's cool if I, if I, you know, don't do quite as well with this. I think I, I helped him out by, by taking the comics and I'm able to, uh, to move the ones that I want to move. And, and he got a, you know, a big lump of cash. So he did fine. So in this collection, there were basically three categories of books. There are two slabs, the Spider-Man 300, I'm not going to show it off. And that was a 6.0 and a 121, that was a 2.0. So those ones kind of have set value. The next category of books were the, some of the, you know, nicer key books, but they were really, really low grade. And, and, and this was totally upfront. Like he, he told me that they're really, really low grade. They're beyond like reader copy low. So we have, you can see how rough a copy this is. Um, ASM 50. This does have a wrap missing, which I discovered when I was going through the book. So it, it was promised as ultra low grade. So all good. So I, I believe it's the centerfold, but I, I, the pages are so brittle. I didn't want to sit and flip through again and figure out which wrap is missing. I just know that if, you know, when you do the page count, there's like seven on each side of the staple instead of eight. So I know there's a wrap that's gone. Um, so that one was like, you know, super, super O grade. There's a 41 and this 41 has a three hole punch. So I, you know, oops, sorry about that. Um, three hole punch, it happens like in a really, really low grade. This more disturbingly with this particular one is it has pages missing, sort of like the 50. And the worst part about it is that individual panels on the inside of the book have been cut out. So you have a page that's there, but a, a whole panel is missing. So some kid took it in and really went to town on and cut out the, the stuff that they liked the most. Um, so this is quite possibly the worst copy of ASM 41 I've ever seen in my life. Um, but you know, it's still an ASM 41. So, uh, that, that one is going to be incredibly difficult to move off. You know, spoiler alert. I'm still going to have that book years down the road in all likelihood. 
And this one was the best out of the ultra, ultra, ultra low grade comics. Um, it like, you know, you can see the, you know, writing on the front, but it is complete. And I put it at, I think there was actually, uh, the covers attached at one staple, if I recall correctly, <clears throat> I put it at a 1.5 copy, but for people who are collectors and are looking to fill out the run and they want, you know, a reasonably priced copy for a book, but, you know, this is a key, but it may not be the biggest key and it's certainly not the most expensive key. So this is um, a reasonably priced alternative to that. So I, this one actually has some value. So when I was looking through the comics, um, and I'm going to try to, you know, move uh, as like at a reasonable clip here so sorry if i'm going a little bit fast but the first one that i looked at was the early earliest comic which is uh, number 26 not a big book it has like vg written on the on the back so i figured okay you know i could live with a vg copy of this that's pretty good to have and when i went through there's actually three pages missing so whoever did the grading um totally missed that there's pages missing uh the person who bought this from that dealer likely overpaid for it and i'm not gonna lie at this point i started to get really nervous um there's a video that i did a little while ago about overpaying for a spider-man collection because the books were much lower grade than i thought and and i just i started thinking uh oh you know are we going through this all again and there were some low grade copies but i'm you know thankfully that was the what, the last one that I found with actual pages missing. So as long as there's no pages missing or cutouts, even a low grade copy, I'm fine with. Um, so there's some like this one with tape on it. Um, this is a really awful, like there's a someone wrote 49 cents at the top and then they tried to remove the 49 cents, which made it look like 10 times worse than if they had just left it. Um, this book has detachment so you have things like that as does this um so there's a, there are a few books when i went through them where there's you know significant flaws and some pretty bad ones but at least everything is there now there's lower grade keys like the 252 was there the 194 uh, and these are basically like maybe a four three and a half four like that type of range mid-grade copy of first shocker 46 um you yeah, have you know the other pin uh, book that was second appearance uh so there's there's books here that are firmly in that four to five range maybe three and a half to five uh, so so that's pretty good this one was actually kind of a cool one because when he was trying to collect the run he bought this comic from me, so it's coming back home. Um, I list it as a weak top staple in VG Plus. And then you have, you know, books that are that are nice to have, like the keys. This one's got a bit of um a bit of, you know, uh not staining, but like all sorts of crap on the cover that that takes away from it because it's it's a white cover. And then you have, you know, just um different minor type key things that were all present inside of this run. And it was basically 250 books, nothing unless you get right to the very end of it is near mint. Some of the keys like this one is like a 2.5 or a three copy. You have all sorts of rub and staining and, and things like that. But you know what, it's, it's fine. Like this one, I actually, you can see what I start to do. Um, I was going through the books and this one I, I'd already processed, so I see it as a good, very good. So it's a three because it has a two inch split from the top, things of that nature. And so, uh, and I'll go through the the other early ones pretty quickly. But uh, but there's a really decent, you know, Spider-Man run. Um, nothing that's a home run in terms of value, but. Um, but when you have, and I've mentioned this in other videos, when you have a lot of books with some value, even if it takes a while to make your investment back, you're typically just going to be okay in general. So, um, yeah, these are the last of the ones that are under issue 100. But the, the run is pretty, 
uh, pretty well filled out when you get to the to the later issues. And there's there were about like I said, two hundred and fifty ish comics in, in total, I think. Um, I didn't count them, but it would be around there, give or take. So yeah, this was um, this turned out. I'm I'm happy with it. Uh, it may have been just the tiniest amount of overpay, like by maybe twenty percent from where I would normally what I would normally give for books like this. But totally fine and totally reasonable. I'll be fine, and and the the seller was happy. So yeah, this was um, this was a great pickup. I think uh, Spider-Man titles is hard to go wrong. So uh, I'll I'll integrate these into my books and and, and go from there. So um, hopefully I'll be able to pick up more collections. I've got books coming back um, that are coming in that are going to be a part of my next crack and resub. So unless I pick up an, another collection, my next video is going to be talking about the next part of my crack and resub project. I've got a whole bunch of books lined up for that and fingers crossed that I get some decent grade bumps. So uh, I hope that uh, that you tune in again and check out my other videos. And until uh, until I do my next video, I'll see you all and happy collecting.